is Heike Dempster. I'm the Associate Director of Public Relations and Outreach at Young Arts. My pronouns are she, her. I'm joining you from Miami, the ancestral land of the Tequesta, Taino, and Seminole, and we acknowledge the original elders, past, present, and future. I want to welcome you all. Thanks for joining us this evening for this info session dedicated to the jazz discipline at the Young Arts National Competition, so you can learn more about why you should apply. Young Arts identifies the most accomplished young artists in the visual, literary, and performing arts and provides them with creative and professional development opportunities throughout their careers. The Young Arts experience usually begins with the application. For many young people, applying to Young Arts is the first step to affirming I am an artist. We want to encourage all artists aged 15 to 18 or in grades 10 to 12 to apply. Once selected, all award winners are offered a lifetime of artistic support and ongoing connection with the ROPES network of peers and mentors. Now, before we start, a few housekeeping notes. As you just heard, the info session is being recorded so that we can share the conversation we are having this evening and all the insights with other potential applicants who may not be able to join us. Um, please make sure you stay on mute and also um, if you can please change your Zoom name to your first name only so we can make sure your privacy is protected. If you have any questions anytime please raise your hand or use the chat and in the next hour we're basically going to tell you more about Young Arts, the competition, how the jazz applications are judged and some tips for your submission. So first now I need to introduce our speakers. We have Javon Jackson, who's a Jazz National Selection Panel Chair at Young Arts and the 1983 Young Arts winner. He's professor of jazz and director of the Jackie McLean Institute of Jazz in the Hart School at the University of Hartford. As leader or co-leader, Jackson has participated in 22 recording projects that have included such renowned artists as Diane Reeves, Cassandra Wilson, Ron Carter, Kenny Garrett, Dr. Lonnie Smith, Les McCann, and Christian McBride. His newest recording, released in September of 2020, is titled Deja Vu on the Solid Jackson recording label. During his career as a musician, Javon Jackson has toured and recorded with artists including Art Blakey, Elvin Jones, Charlie Hayden, Freddie Hubbard, Donald Byrd, Cedo Walton, Ron Carter, and Joanne Brookin. Then we also welcome Veronica Leahy, who is a junior enrolled in the Harvard Berkeley Dual Degree Program. She's a 2018 Young Arts finalist in jazz, and since then has played at venues such as the Monterey Jazz Festival, the Ravinia Music Festival, and Dizzy's Club. We also have joining us Nidra Ward, Associate Director of Winner Programs at Young Arts. So thank you all again, and I'll pass it on to Javon. Thank you. Thank you, Heike, and good evening to everyone. Pleasure to be here to talk with you about uh, Young Arts and my involvement with it. First of all, it's a phenomenal organization, a lot of great uh, history, and just to apply, I feel there's a, a, a great opportunity in itself. So if you leave with nothing else that I say, every opportunity that you have to audition, just take advantage of it if you feel you meet the criteria. Um, one of the biggest opportunities that happened to me in my life was because someone pushed me into auditioning for something that I never wanted to audition for. And it was actually one of the big turning points for me uh, to have a career in this business. So I, I really want you just to consider that. Um, I also have uh, one aspect to, to mention to you is that uh, really have a good look at the criteria regarding the repertoire that you feel like you want to audition on and make sure that it's something that you really feel strongly about. Um, there's three aspects, I think, regarding song selection. Uh, as you know, if you're a jazz musician, blues is uh, central to what we do. So there's a blues uh, that you would select. I think it's uh, Billy's Bounce or uh, one of the great Charlie Parker pieces. And then the second aspect is any jazz uh, piece that you would deem uh, comfortable for you and or uh, or slash American uh, Broadway uh, a piece of music. So that would be Have You Met Miss Jones or There Will Never Be Another You, songs like that. And then in the jazz area, songs like uh, uh, Maiden Voyage or uh, there's, a, there's, there's so many. I know most people, Arigen, so most people would know any song like that, that you feel that you uh, can audition strong on. And then the third aspect would be, 
a ballad, which is very, very critical for uh, a jazz compo a jazz uh, performer. So pick a ballad that you feel most uh, comfortable with that you can present and you feel strongly about in terms of delivering the melody. One thing I want to say is if you can think about it, pick something that shows your abilities, but it doesn't have to be something that you feel, well, if you don't play Countdown, or if you don't play Giant Steps, or if you don't play some super, super, uh, uh, what we might uh, call uh, involved piece that you won't be looked at favorably, that as far as I'm concerned is not the criteria just to sound good and as strong and as mature and present as well on whatever the piece is. So it doesn't mean that you can't do a challenging piece, but don't make it a situation where you feel like you have to do a challenging piece for someone to really look favorably on you. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, there's a, there's a two process uh, point where uh, two layers to it. So everyone auditions and then there's a, a criteria uh, where you're, uh, looked at the audition and then uh, we kind of, uh, not weeded, but it is kind of uh, vetted down to the next group and then that group is uh, looked at and adjudicated on and then the selection is, is done. Um, uh, the, the week itself is a phenomenal week. There's so much interaction that you have as a jazz artist with other uh, visiting artists that we bring in, uh, Young Arts brings in for you to interface with. And then everyone participates with original music and then selections from the jazz canon that we all uh, love and appreciate. And uh, initially, those are my general comments. I'd love to bring in uh, Veronica Leahy, who has some thoughts. And uh, she was a recipient in 2018. And for me, a real um, great person to talk to you about this because she kind of typifies what I feel was a, a perfect student who was selected and really exemplifies um, a young arts uh, awardee. So let's let Veronica save me for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Javon. Um, I agree with everything Javon said, particularly that you don't have to feel like you need to uh, to play a certain kind of piece in order to get selected. One of the things that I really like about young arts and, that I really appreciate about the jazz discipline particularly is the variety of musicians that you see um, year to year. There's really not one specific kind of improviser or one specific kind of musician that gets it. It's really just, um, you know, it's always a group of, of really just students who I think are just really honest about what they're doing um, and who care about what they're doing. Um, and so I think just be true to yourself in terms of the audition, which I know is maybe a little bit vague, but I think in improvised music, I think that's the most important thing is to not try to sound a certain way, to impress somebody or to try to guess what people would be looking for. Because um, I think what makes great improvisers really varies from, you know, there's no one criteria. So I would say, so I'd say, yeah, just pick pieces that allow you to shine, honestly. I'm trying to remember what I auditioned with. I think I auditioned with Billy's Bounce, Arigen, and Peace by Horace Silver. I think those were my, those were my pieces. And um, yeah, so um, th there's a variety of different pieces that can work. Um, so that's one thing that I just wanted to say, and we, I'm sure we'll get more questions about it and we can talk more about it later. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of young arts, it was really a life-changing experience. And I, I say that lightly. I genuinely mean that. Um, I think first and foremost, it's just the connections that you make during that week that are so incredible. Um, just starting with the peers, what's so great about, what's so great about young arts as opposed to a lot of other, um, you know, competitions and bands is that it's a combo as opposed to big band. And I find like a lot of the other um, opportunities for high schoolers, particularly our, our big band oriented, which is really, really great. Um, and I love big band playing, but I think it's so great to have sort of the small ensemble um, environment of young arts because you really get to know everybody in the band. Um, and the guys who were my bandmates in 2018 when I did young arts are still some of my closest friends. Um, 
it's actually crazy how well we've all kept in touch. I still play with those guys, like play gigs with them. I also just keep in touch with them and we call, you know, from time to time, they've become some of my closest friends. So um, I think that's one of the really beautiful things about, about the jazz discipline is just the community that it fosters um, being, being in a combo format. Um, and yeah, um, so that's, that's one thing. I don't want to, I don't want to talk for too long, um, so feel free to cut me off whenever. But um, I really enjoyed that. I also think the connections that I made outside of my discipline were also extremely valuable, and that's something that's something that Young Arts really, really, um, it it just really succeeds at is encouraging the interdisciplinary um, communication and community this it's really unique to young arts you know um again sort of if you compare it to other opportunities there might be for young jazz musicians i really don't know of any other program where you're also interacting with you know visual artists and um you know filmmakers and dancers and classical musicians at the highest levels and it's kind of crazy how much you keep running into these people throughout your life um, as Heike mentioned, I'm currently a student in the Harvard and Berkeley dual degree program, and there are so many young arts alums between Harvard and Berkeley. It's actually, it's actually crazy. Like even in my small dual degree program, there's multiple people who, who've done young arts. Um, in my class at Harvard, there's multiple young arts uh, winners from different disciplines, and I've kept in really good touch with them. And um, some of them are my closer friends here and the reason that we connected on like the first school was like oh I remember you from Young Arts and anyways you just keep running into these people throughout your life um and uh so so yeah I think it's just wonderful to have that built-in community because you can immediately meet somebody and say oh yes you did Young Arts I did Young Arts too and you know it's it's just like an instant connection um you immediately have something to talk about and something to relate to um so so yeah I really think community is I would say the the number one best part about about this program and yeah I I have some other things to talk about and I can I can keep going um, but Javon, I don't know if you have anything to add to anything I've said so far. That was one thing I wanted to add before I was going to have Nidra maybe look at some some of the other fine points of, of the audition process is that there's regional opportunities and national opportunities with the young arts. So um, most of the, the folks that uh, in audition and, and get selected at some level will be involved in different aspects of young arts. The other thing I want to say about young arts, which I really appreciate, they allow each discipline to keep it as real as possible. What I mean by that is you come in on a, I think we come in on a Saturday, we meet everyone on Sunday, we come in and, and the jazz discipline we perform on in a couple of days. So everyone brings all the music, we sit right down, we immediately start rehearsing. That's what we do in the real world. And what's great about it too is the musicians allow each other to uh, critique, make changes, make additions and help create the final process which they own themselves. That's the way it works in the real world. When you when I joined our Blakey's band, if there was something wrong with it, Wallace Roney touched me on the side and said, hey, Javon, we need to, let's see if we could do something with this harmony or this whatever part of the arrangement to enhance it. So that's the same thing that we do there. And it's a democracy, so everyone is involved. Everyone gets featured, everyone's music gets showcased. And that way, it's the real way that music is presented. And it's a group effort. And so together, the group um, works to, to do the best presentation. So everyone owns all of it. And so that's why I think it's really unique. It, it really keeps it, um, around the, the trajectory of what you would experience later as a professional musician. Need you was anything to amplify or talk a little bit about the fine points or have we hit it good enough to take some questions or? Uh, well, let's see if there's any questions right now. If not, then I'll go into the little bit of details of the actual application. Okay. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to use the raise hand feature or also ask it in the chat. 
I'll just give maybe like a minute or two. Um, and if not, we'll go into the application details. The words, yeah. of, the words of Charlie Parker, now's the time. I wanna just add to what Javon was just saying uh, quickly in just a second that I love that the students actually get to bring in the music, which is so great. Um, it's It doesn't feel like, oh, we come in and the panelists have a bunch of music for us and then they, you know, direct us. It's more like we're bringing in charts or that we've arranged or that we've written and we're getting real time feedback, which is a really great model for, yeah, how jazz actually works. <laughs> oh, and I see a question in the chat. Uh, okay, so I will take the first one here. Where is the actual event for Young Arts held? So the um, application process and adjudication process is all done digitally. And then if you are selected at the top level, which is the finalist level, you are invited to participate in National Young Arts Week, which is in January in Miami. And that is an all expenses paid um, trip. There is no cost to the winner whatsoever. Um, and then if you are in, if you are a, at the other levels of winners also, which is honorable mention and merit, those are uh, the three levels, finalist, honorable mention and merit. And all levels of winners are invited to participate in regional programs. Um, currently due to COVID, we're trying to get back into person and we only have a uh, Young Arts Miami for next year, but we are looking to bring back the other two cities, which was LA and New York. Um, so currently right now, two programs for 2022 are in Miami, one being the national and then one being the regional. Um, is there an instrument limitation is the next question. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. We would never have an ensemble with four alto saxophonists, or we wouldn't have an ensemble with four trombonists. So um, there's been years where we've had what you would call a set test. So it'd be four horn out front, say alto, tenor, trombone, trumpet, guitar, piano, bass, drums. Uh, one year, um, I'm trying to think, did we have a violin? No, I, I can't remember. Oh, we had baritone saxophone one year. So it, it, it just varies. There's no real quite criteria just how everything lines up. So it doesn't get any, any larger than seven to eight instruments total. I can't see the question, so I know there's- uh, no That's okay, I'll read them. So I think this one is meant to say, where is Young Arts located? So we are, our headquarters is in Miami also. Um, so yeah, that is where the actual headquarters is, but we do have programming. In a normal year, we have programming in um, LA, New York, Miami, and actually DC for presidential scholars. Um, are auditions in person or virtual? So as I mentioned before, the application process is digital. Everything is done um, digitally for the application and for the different rounds of adjudications. And then if you do make it to the finalist level, you are brought to Miami for in-person further uh, auditions. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. Um, can I play a Latin song for the up-tempo selection? Sure you can. <laughs> um, da, da, da. If you submit in the composition category, do you participate in the week in Miami if you are selected? That is a tough question because let's say you submit uh, a composition for jazz big band we might not, we probably wouldn't have the instrumentation for the big band. So um, in that instance, uh, for a large ensemble, probably not. A smaller ensemble, Nidra Wright, could be applicable. Mm -hmm. But a large ensemble would, would probably not occur in that way. Although knowing Young Arts and, and work with Nidra, there'd be some way for your piece to be um, utilized and, 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 and performed maybe with a that's a good question. Working with a with a college big band that I have relationships with, or something like that, and get it performed in video that way. But at this time, you probably wouldn't. He or she would not be able to come down because we wouldn't have the instrumentation for it. Okay. 
Okay, how long is the program? So if you are speaking about the national program in January in Miami, that is approximately a week long. Uh, you guys would fly in on a Sunday and depart on the Sunday after. Um, how many winners will be selected in each discipline? So each discipline has a cap of finalists, but honorable mentions and merits are unlimited. So the panel can select however many honorable mentions and merits they would like. Um, it is unlimited. And finalists, it, it differs from each uh, discipline, but in the jazz discipline, it's usually around eight, um, eight finalists that are selected. Um, are arrangements of songs accepted for auditions? They are, but if if I were the soloist, I would consider picking the piece of music and focusing on the solo, not so much arranging, because the criteria is your soloist. So use one of the thousands and thousands of pieces out there. Just pick three pieces and and, and concern yourself as a soloist, if you get selected, then you get to bring the arrangement anyway to solo on your arrangement. So I would con I would I would focus on um, the solo aspect and and picking a crack picking uh, a universal piece that we all can uh, that we can all agree upon as panelists that we recognize and and uh, give a good uh, adjudication for. Okay, in the next question, it says in the audition requirements where it says you need X choruses of solo, does that mean that many choruses by the applicant or just three choruses, including choruses by other combo members? Okay, let's say you're a trumpeter. You play the melody and then you play the amount of choruses that you feel help present yourself. And then as we say, take it out. If you're a bassist, for example, then you would play the melody and then you would walk for a couple of courses so we could hear you walking and hear your bass line and harmonic approach. Then you play your solo, take it out. If you're a drummer, the same situation where you would come in, you don't have to play the melody, but you would have somebody play the melody, you play time for a little bit, and then you play an open drum solo. Uh, for a couple of courses, same with the piano, play the melody, and then you could comp behind a soloist and then take your solo and then take it out. Does that help for everyone? But if you're a soloist or uh, uh, instrumental, um, well, horn player, wind player, play the melody, play your solo, and then you can take it out. Uh, okay, next one. Do the students pick their own songs for audition? Yes. The songs are just make sure that you follow the requirements. Um, the requirements can be found on our website and also within the application itself. Um, so whatever you are applying in, whatever dis um, sorry, discipline and instrument you're applying in, make sure you review those requirements in detail. Um, and then you would submit those yourself. It's, it's at your choosing um, to the application for the panelists to review. Um, how many ensembles are selected? So I think that might be referring to just Young Arts Week. So that's one ensemble. And then as I mentioned, um, honorable mentions and merits are unlimited. So there's no uh, specific ensemble required for those levels. Um, and again, you know, all three of those are levels of winners. You are a winner, whether you're a finalist, honorable mention or merit. All of you receive the same support um, as you would uh, at any level, um, not just in your winning year, but also in, in the future. Um, as Veronica mentioned, it's a community. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities that Young Arts um, provides and, and allows access to um, our past winners through Young Arts Post, um, which is uh, basically like a community building um, platform for our uh, alumni and a place for, for you to view opportunities, to um, present oppor opportunities to other past winners. Um, so again, yeah, three levels of winners, but all of them are winners and they receive the same support um, their winning year and uh, even in the future. Um, I'll skip to the next one. If I submit more than one discipline, would performance of one negatively 
impact the other or will they be judged totally separate? Um, so you can apply in as many disciplines and categories as you'd like. Um, there is no limit to that. Um, it does not affect you negatively if you submit in one category and you make it in another category and you don't make it in another category. That is absolutely not a, a, a negative impact at all. First, in the, in the first round of adjudications, um, your instrument is looked at by three, your uh, application, sorry, is looked at by three um, panelists who are specific to that instrument. And then if you advance to the next level, um, you are looked at by the panel as a whole. Um, and that's where Javon and his fellow panelists um, make those decisions in that round. So you can apply in as many as you'd like. Um, and the, again, it's there is no negative impact on on either of that of those. Um, can a pianist play three jazz solos to be qualified? What is the what is what do you mean by that three jazz solos? What, what do you mean? What what does he get to he or she get to play a solo on each piece? The answer would be yes. So we just look for you to um, do some accompaniment behind a soloist. But at the same time, if you felt like doing solo piano for your ballad, that's fine. If you feel like you can display yourself um, at a certain way where solo piano gets it done, then do it without um, a rhythm section. But as you know, that that's a pretty uh, tough hill to climb. But no, there's no um, criteria, if I'm understanding that right, Nidra, where everyone gets three solos. <laughs> um, okay, I am a piano player and I have a sibling who plays bass that also wants to audition for Young Arts. Can we play on each other's audition tapes? <laughs> You can, um, but just note that you the, the Young Arts competition is a solo competition. So you, as the person who is playing piano or a person who is playing guitar or drums or what have you, you are the one being adjudicated on that uh, audition piece. So your siblings can't say, well, my brother won, but I didn't. <laughs> Um, because they were playing in your bands. So it, it is a solo competition and they are looking at the applicant and the applicant's instrument that they are playing um, throughout those audition pieces. So I right. just wanna make, make that clear. To add to that need to, so right, if, if it's a bassist and a drummer, the drummer, he or she needs to make their own presentation and the other sibling needs to make their own presentation. We're not going to look at that presentation and go, wow, he's doing a good job, or he or she is doing a good job playing behind them. So we're going to factor that into he or she when they do their other presentation. They're totally separate. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> So I'll take a little break to just go into the details of the application itself. Um, it is currently open. Um, you're, uh, you would need to for jazz, as Javon mentioned, uh, three pieces um, for them to review. Um, the application closes um, October 15th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. That is 8.59 p.m. Pacific. So please make note that it is Eastern time. Um, the 11.59 p.m. Then adjudications happens for the next about month or so. Um, again, digital and, and uh, a couple levels that uh, the application goes through. And then by the beginning of December is when all uh, winners will be announced, all the levels of winners will be announced. Um, Young Arts Week is in January, uh, January 6th to the 9th, I believe. Starts on the oh, ninth. sorry, uh, ninth to the ninth to the sixteenth. Had my numbers backwards there. Um, so uh, that is uh, for that, and then the regional is uh, currently scheduled to be held in March. 
um, the regional for Miami. We are also currently scheduled to be in person um, for both programs. That is our goal, pending any crazy COVID world problems. <laughs> um, so yes, we are planning to be in person as well. Um, another little detail, you must be between the ages of 15 and 18 on December 1st or in grades 10 through 12 for this uh, school season um, in order to apply. And um, the application is completely blind to the judges. So that means while yes, you have to fill out your name and all of this contact information and education and all of that stuff in the application, the judges don't see any of that. They only see your videos. So you are being judged based solely on the videos that you are uh, submitting to, to the program, to the competition. So just to note that as well. Um, let me think, I think that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? I would say real quickly, two things. First, um, if you can do your audition with the material memorized, that uh, is favorable and it looks good. So if you don't know the music well enough where you can't look at it, then don't do it. <laughs> That's really important because at this, at this level, think about all the other talented, talented students that are auditioning as well. And you can guarantee most all of them have the music memorized. So take the time now to memorize the material. I think that's really important. And what Nidra just said, we always every year still get someone who will say, my name's Veronica. And so don't tell us who your name is. People, <laughs> because I know we're used to announcing ourselves in the video. So don't announce yourself because you've already let us know in a written fashion what the name of the piece is. So don't make that mistake. It won't disqualify you, but you just, it's helpful for us not to really know what city you're from or who you are. So we can really say it's an objective uh, adjudication. Veronica, do you wanna talk a little more? <laughs> yeah, sure. I have a couple more thoughts. Um, one for the audition, I know that, you know, sometimes it's difficult with, um, with access, but I think if possible, trying to play with a live band um, or to have elements of a live band, if possible, is really helpful so that you have people to interact with. Um, you know, I, you all are jazz musicians, so you know that, but, you know, being able to, to respond and react is really, really helpful. And I think if you, you know, don't have access to a live band and you're playing with a play along, just thinking about trying to, you know, emulate that interaction as much as possible um, to give it a lot of good energy is, is, is important. I think energy and honesty are the most important things um, in this audition process. Um, and feel free to ask any more questions to me if you have questions about what it was like to audition or if you have questions about the week from a student perspective. Um, oh, and I see some more questions. Um, let's see, an application. Yeah, I'll take I'll take the first yeah, one. Yeah, maybe um, take that. And I have something to say too after. Uh, in the application that asks for high school name, is there anything needed from the school teachers? There is not anything needed from the teachers themselves. However, in that same in that same spot, it does ask the applicant if they would like to acknowledge a teacher who has supported them in their you know career in the arts. Um, so that would be a place for the student to list any teachers that they wanted to acknowledge. Um, there are two teacher, up to two teachers that they can acknowledge, um, and then it just asks for their name and maybe an email address, but nothing, um, nothing further than that. Um, on the addition requirements, it mentions that you can use a pre-recorded format if it's not a live band. How do you recommend going about this, the pre-recording? So we did change this, Javon, if you remember for, for COVID, because <laughs> uh, we did get a lot of applicants who weren't able to get a band together. 
So um, we did allow for, and we kept it again this year because COVID's not over, um, but we did allow for um, a pre-recorded track to be played uh, in the background as, as you're playing your instrument. Javon, do you wanna give a little insight on how they can get those tracks or what, what, it, what it is you're looking for in those tracks? Well, I'm, I'm starting to be a dinosaur. I know there's so many different <laughs> available opportunities for the students use so Veronica may can uh, speak to that but again if you want to use the the play around tracks Aversol is probably the most famous but any of those or if there's a situation where you're only able to just have a bassist or there's these various play along tracks that that's not gonna uh, hinder or make it uh, hurt your application in any way because we understand that at this time, that in person just is not happening as 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 frequently yet as we would like. So um, regarding some of the platforms, Veronica, what are some of the platforms out there? That you yeah, know? I was just about to say. So um, you know, iReal Pro is obviously a great tool. Um, you know, it's an app on your phone where you can like set the tempo and it has a bunch of standards in it. Um, I I use iReal Pro actually. A fair amount just like in practice and stuff especially over covid but i think for an audition tape it's not necessarily the best since it doesn't since it's it's not humans playing um and so you lose that and so i actually think if you're using a pre-recorded format i think you should go with like the classic abrasol tracks i think those are really good actually because they're like real humans playing playing those and I mean whenever I've played with Aver solid tracks I'm able to actually like respond to what the band's doing because they're really good rhythm sections that are playing on all of those um all of those tapes so you're working with you're working with some good energy behind you so that's my personal opinion um that's my two cents and there's also like um maybe learn jazz .com, I think might have some good like play alongs that are like again actual humans who actually build you know throughout the solo section and give you stuff give you something to work um so um yeah that's my two cents great um if you're not a good singer or can you just play your instrument so just to be clear this is for jazz instrumental um, there is a voice category for jazz, um, but that is a separate, completely separate discipline. Um, so this is, it, this is an instrumental jazz um, discussion. So you would not sing for your audition for this, um, for this discipline and category. Um, I also want to add. Sure, sure, yeah, go ahead. Oh, quick, oh, sorry. No, I just wanted to add quickly that, um, in just having gone through this process myself and having a lot of friends who went through the audition process, I think a lot of people felt pressure to like go to a recording studio and and like make it look just like and sound absolutely perfect. And while I think definitely if you have those resources and you want to do that, like, you know, knock yourself out. I definitely just want to say it's not required, you know, like I didn't go to a studio to record my um, my tapes and I have a lot of friends who got into these programs that not go to professional recording studios. Um, I have some friends that did, but I, I think you don't have to do that. And um, you can get a great home recording. Um, if you have a live band and you just drop one mic in the middle of that band, that's closer to you, that can often capture what you need to. I mean, if you can get a multi-track thing going and you can get sound isolation and stuff, obviously, yes, it will sound better, but I think, uh, I don't wanna speak for Javon, but I know that the panelists are, understand that you're not you know, recording an album. Um, and so they're not expecting that level of, um, necessarily that level of like, you know, time and money to be poured into the sound quality. As long as it, like you can be heard and you know, you're doing the best with what you've got. I think that's the most important thing. Amen. And we've seen videos in kitchens, in bedrooms, in living rooms. The big thing is that you're videoed so that we can see you. So if you have some way to video yourself, whether it's with a phone or whether it's with a, uh, if you have a small video machine, but right, there's no need to go to any um, 
financial uh, into financial uh, apparel there for the video. I mean, the better the the better you can make the video, sure. But um, if you can if you can do it in your home and get it done, that where you do it is, has no bearing on whether you select it or not. Um, so how many people typically apply for the awards? So across all disciplines, we have uh, around 7,000 uh, the past few years. Um, in the jazz discipline specifically, across all the instruments, it's usually around 300, 350 that apply uh, annually. Veronica, do you have a couple other things you wanted to say? Yeah, I just wanted to um, to also just mention that, um, first of all, the guest artists that come in are really, really amazing. Um, I was chatting with Javon actually about this right before, right before the Zoom started about just all the great guest artists that came my year. And I, I still remember and cherish all those experiences like, um, I got to meet Jimmy Heath, which was really, really special. And that's something that I, I remember. Um, and met Patrice Russian, who ended up being a huge influence on me. I didn't really know Patrice Russian. I wasn't familiar with her work before that. Um, and I remember meeting her and being like, wow, wait, I, this is a kindred spirit, you know, and that sort of led to her becoming a really big inspiration for me. And um, uh, Bill Pierce was also a guest artist my year. Um, so there's really amazing people outside of just the panelists who are also amazing, um, but that come in and, and work with you. So that's a really cool aspect of it. And the last thing I wanted to mention was that the alumni network is really, really strong. Um, I feel like sometimes organizations will say, we have such a strong alumni community and it's only some like it's like not really true but i actually find young arts actually really follows through on that um like i've gotten pulled into cool opportunities after young arts like i remember i think it was the year after i did young arts i got to do a really cool gig in aspen um with young arts and met some other alumni through that and that led to another gig that was really exciting in new york and so like it's just especially in jazz but in all the disciplines like this stuff so connection based and so just any way that you can just meet people and get opportunities to be heard and to hear other people and to just connect with people it's really really valuable um since this is like a freelance connections based world and so um yeah i you know i know i've said a lot but i really like this program and i really think if you have any if you have any desire to apply, I would say just just go for it. And even putting in just the time to put together an application is an incredibly valuable experience too, um, even if you don't make it. And the other thing is, uh, people say a lot that um, nothing in life is free, and that's not true. Information is free, and this opportunity is free. So you should give it a shot. And the other reason that is good is that you will receive feedback. Everyone gets feedback from the adjudicators about what you did right and what you can work on, what you can build on. So uh, there's nothing to be lost in the process. And it's, it's not necessarily about being a winner or being a loser. It's just getting involved and getting more experience and being more comfortable with your craft and playing your instrument. Actually, Javon, I'm glad you brought that up because it is, there is a, an application fee of $35 per application. However, we offer fee waivers um, and those fee waivers are very easy to obtain. All you have to do is get a letter from your parent, teacher, um, or if you're 18, you can write one yourself just saying that you uh, need to have your fee waived. You don't even have to give us a reason. Just say, I need it waived. I'm in need, that's all you need to do to um, get those fees waived. And it is waived for each application that you do apply in. So yes, could be free, <laughs> could be a free opportunity um, uh, if you need it, but uh, otherwise it is $35 per application that you apply in. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> that's a small investment. <laughs>
35 bucks. That's McDonald's three times. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, we can wrap up a little early. Um, I just want to put the um, email. If you have any questions that you think of after this session is over, feel free to write us an email, give us a call. The email address is apply at youngarts.org. Um, there's several uh, team members who answer that that email, so we will get to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, so just curious, if selected but can't make the performance week, would the candidate be disqualified? No, you are not disqualified. Um, if you aren't able to make it to Young Arts Week, you are still a finalist, um, and you would receive um, a monetary award of $500. Um, if you do participate in Young Arts Week, you can win anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000. If you cannot participate, you are still a finalist, but would receive $500. Um, and if you are eligible to reapply the, the next year, you could reapply because you did not participate in Young Arts Week. If you did participate in Young Arts Week, that's it. You made the top level and you are not eligible to reapply. But um, if you cannot make it, no, you are not disqualified. You are still a winner and you are still a finalist. Keep the questions coming if you want, um, but otherwise we um, we can just wrap a little early and thank you all for coming. Thank you, Javon. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Heike. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Apply to Young Arts. <laughs> Thanks, good luck. Definitely apply.